This video will go through the material properties and model and solver settings in the SLB software. We will also show how to input different concrete grades and different design types into the slab zones. So design type is how we link reinforcement to the various slab zones. Uh, the settings as they relate to specific topics will be covered in much more detail in their relevant video. To access the material properties, we go to the input tab and hit material properties. So the first tab we see is concrete and steel material. This is just the general steel properties that will be applied to the slab. So we specify steel MPA, the ductility for example, uh, moment redistribution, slab minimum strength, things like that. Um, whether or not we include torsion in the design. We also specify the, uh, the B material properties, so the steel, the percentage of compressive reinforcement. And we'll go through the various beam material properties, all these, all these various design parameters in detail in the uh, beam and wide beam video. Now, this concrete and steel material in this particular tab that we input, this only applies to columns and walls. So the, uh, the co this isn't concrete grade for the various slab zones and we input our story height here as well. Now if importing from the RCB software, all of this information would be filled in already. The long term deflection settings is where the design shrinkage strain and design creep coefficient are calculated. Um, so this is used in the uh, long term deflection calculations. Again, we won't go through this in detail, this will be covered uh, in much more detail in the SLB deflections video. Now the slab concrete type table, this is where we specify the concrete grade. So we assign a, a concrete grade, a custom label, to a various slab type. So currently the default value of 32 MPA has been input. We will put an additional, additional one in the 40 MPA and the program pre-fills the values for us. We can then modify them if we want. If we hit OK, and uh, with the material property defined, um, we can then start assigning it to the various slab zones. So how we assign the material to a various slab zone is by selecting it and modifying the type property. So there's a material associated to the, um, to the various types and that's how we link it to the slab zone. So the easiest way is to go to color element, color by slab type, and we see that everything is currently type one, which is linked to 32 MPA. And we also have uh, 40 MPA defined, but it's not used. And if we press this button here, that just takes us back to the concrete properties table. So for example, if we wanted to make everything 40 MPA, the quickest way would be to go back to the home tab, hit select by type, slab zones, all slab zones, and change the type to two. So currently everything now is set to 40 MPA. So when we refer to the slab type, we refer to just the concrete, the, the concrete associated with that particular zone. Going back to material properties, uh, wh this, this particular table is common across the three programs, so RCB, SLB, and PTD. And these are the various values if we're importing, exporting between the programs that we carry across. So this is why we separ separate the concrete properties from the reinforcement properties, which is shown in this slab, we call it the slab design type. So here we have the various slab design parameters other than concrete. Why this is in its own table is that this particular table is just unique to the SLB software. So here we specify things that will influence the design like uh, exposure, degree of restraint, crack, require crack control, um, uh, the clear cover, the design cover, the bar size. So we'll go into each of these parameters in much more detail in the reinforcement video, but the key thing to take away from this video is that concrete is in this table, which we refer to as the type, and then reinforcement is in this other table, which we refer to as the design type. Now, <coughs> by
by default, the, this minimum steal rate value is blank. If this value is blank, when the program calculates the reinforcement, it will calculate the, um, the theoretical minimum required to the design code. If we were to put some values in here, then the program would be checking these user-defined values. For the time being, let's leave it as blank. We'll put in one additional um, design type just to see how it looks. So I'll label this one interior and I'll label this one balcony. We'll set exposure to exposed inland so the program automatically fills in the values. I'll set primary in both directions so two-way flat plate slab and put some larger cover and some bar size the same. set the part length sequence. So I won't, fill in, I won't fill in the values, I want the program just to calculate some theoretical minimum steel for me, but I've just updated the cover so the program will use the correct effective depth in the balcony sections. So hitting OK, we'll start applying these. Now how we apply these to the various zones, similarly to the type, we modify the design type property. Again, it's easiest to color all of the slabs by the various types. So currently everything's set to type 1. I'll just select the balconies now and holding shift I will specify type 2. So we can see everything is set to type 2 and if we hit this button of the, back of the label wasn't there We can see we've got the label now and we've got uh, a different design type with a different effective depth of the balcony and a separate one here in the internal areas of the slab. And once, if we were to start defining different reinforcement in these zones, we would use the design types. So going back to the material properties summary, type refers to concrete. This is carried across between the RCB, SLB and PTD programs and design type are the reinforcement values that are just kept in the SLB file. Continuing on, service load settings. So these will influence our long-term deflection results. Now we'll go through each of these parameters in much more detail in the SLB deflections video. Beam shear is where we specify the various beam shear parameters. This will be covered in more detail in the beam and wide beam video. And the punching shear parameters are input in the punching shear tab. And all of these parameters will be covered in detail in the punching shear video. And we have one more tab at the bottom, band beam torsion. All of these will be discussed in the beam and wide beam video. And with them, like all of the settings in the inductor software, we can save these as default and we can also read the defaults as well. So that is the material properties, what they are, how we set them, just a quick overview. And we'll go across now to the model and solver settings. So quickly we have this general area which we'll discuss a bit now. Um, the mesh settings will be discussed in the meshing principles video. The area method settings will be discussed in the reactions video. And this beam section, they will be discussed in the, in the beams video. So general settings, we can specify the design code. We can just change some viewing options, whether or not we want to include the self weight of the columns and walls in the reactions, adjust the flexibility. The uh, basically slab shear by thick plate theory, that, that will be covered in its own video. But if we switch this on, the program will use a different find element node when it calculates the slab shear. So if this is off, if we wanted to view shear in the slab, it would be, we would have to derive it from the moment. Whereas if this was switched on, we would calculate slab shear directly uh, using thick plate theory. You know, by default, SLB is using thin plate find element theory. And the number of mode shapes will be discussed in the in the frequency analysis video and area load refinement factor that will be discussed in more detail uh, when area loads are discussed in the uh, in the loading video 
a brief review uh, we had a quick look at the where everything is in the material properties the various tabs and in the model and solver settings in the material properties we specified a different uh, concrete grade which we then applied to the um, to the various slab zones so we made we changed everything from the default type 132 MPA to the uh, type 240 MPA concrete, which we defined. And this was done by changing the type property. We then went in and basically specified an area that will have different cover. So we labeled this one as balcony. We changed its exposure, meaning that the crack control calculations will be different. Um, different from the the default interior area and we set that as a different design type so we selected the balconies and changed the design type property now all of the various deflection settings reinforcement settings beam settings punching shear settings they will all be covered in the uh, in the next videos so this concludes this video thank you for watching